Another semantic approach uh, is called LSI or LSA. Uh, in some areas, they are different, but in IR, they are the same. They mean the same thing. And this is based on representing documents uh, as vectors. So that's similar to vector space model, basically. So we've seen this picture in the very beginning of the discussion about vector space model. Now, uh, we have this matrix C between uh, terms and documents, right? And according uh, to linear algebra, actually linear algebra uh, tells us that any matrix can be decomposed as follows, as three other matrices, where U and B are unitary matrices, so they are squared, and they have certain properties where transposed is the same as the inverse. And uh, uh, sigma in the middle is a diagonal matrix with singular values. So basically, we only have values on the di diagonal, and they are called singular values. So that's why it's called singular value decomposition. This is just a fact from linear algebra. Uh, some examples, if you have C of this shape, then uh, you'll have uh, sigma as this. And if you have C more horizontal, you have uh, sigma like that. That's just, again, linear algebra, nothing but IR yet. So let's uh, take a look at the example. So we have six documents, we have five words, and you see that actually three words are pretty similar to each other in terms of semantics. Don't forget, we are trying semantical matching. And these uh, words are pretty similar to each other. And you see that actually there is some sort of clustering. The first three documents talk about ships and boats and oceans. And the last three documents mainly talk about voyage and trip. Although document four also talks, uh, sorry, um, document one also talks about voyage. So basically, if I submit a query trip, maybe I still want to retrieve document five because it may be semantically similar to uh, word trip, although the word trip doesn't even occur there. So what do we do? We try to decompose it. Now, this is the matrix for words. This is the matrix for documents. And this is a singular, uh, well, a diagonal matrix with singular values. And you see that the singular values are decreasing. So this is the largest, second largest, and so on. And of course, in the term document matrix, we'll have lots and lots of terms, lots and lots of documents, millions of every all of millions of terms and millions of documents. So these matrices will be huge and there will be millions of singular values and only some of them will be large only, and, and most of them will be close to zero. We will uh, come back to that later. But even here, so we now have some sort of representation for words, which we are less interested in. We are more interested in representations of documents. So these are vector representations of documents. We have five components. And you see that, for example, indeed, the first two components of the first three documents are pretty similar to each other. Especially the second component distinguishes between the first three documents and the last three documents. So this talking about ocean and sheep and uh, boat, and this talking about voyage and trip. So the second component seems to be quite uh, good separated between these two documents. Uh, two sets of documents, sorry. Now, uh, this is the, the composition. And if you write it uh, based on uh, every component, component based, then you have this representation from one to the number of singular values. This is the singular value. This is the, I believe, the um, term vector and the document vector. And here, the important thing happens. We do the low rank approximation of this sum. This is the full sum. And as I said, these matrices are huge. And this matrix is huge. And most singular values are small. So basically, most components in this summation are very small because singular values are very small. And actually, we can drop them away. So we can only consider the top k singular values, maybe the top 10 or top 1,000 singular values. And then we call a low rank approximation. Since most other singular values are very small, very close to zero, this will be roughly equal to this low rank approximation, which we write down as these matrices. So these matrices are much smaller. These matrices, for example, it has k elements on the diagonal. So uh, for example, if we do the k uh, equals two, then the documents are now represented with vectors of just the two components where the second component, as I said, 
really distinguishes between the two sets of documents. And in terms of singular values, we only have the first two singular values. Uh, why did we do that? Again, to make it less uh, complex, less heavy, and uh, just just make it tractable. So now we have the original term document metrics, terms here, documents here, and we have a low rank approximation. So low rank approximation of terms, low rank approximation of documents, and singular values here. That's just from Wikipedia. And uh, the original document is con uh, can be represented as this. And this is our low rank approximation, semantic, semantic approximation of the document, which if you multiply uh, by the inverse of this from the left and take into account that the inverse of u is equal to its transposed, you get this. And the inverse of a square matrix is still a square matrix where you have not sig sigma one, but one over sigma one and one over sigma k. So this is very easy to compute from this and just, just one over. And this is just transposed of this. So basically these matrices are given, as long as you have the uh, SVD decomposition, you get these matrices. And now this is your new representation of a document. So this used to be just binary zero one representation, very long. This is a dense semantic representation. And again, we hope that now uh, semantically similar documents become more similar to each other, more closer to semantic space to each other. And basically, uh, what do you do uh, for, for ranking? Again, you represent uh, documents as uh, vectors using SVD and low rank approximation. When uh, a query arrives, you also represent a query as well, semantically. This you can pre-compute basically, this you compute on the fly, and then you use uh, cosine similarity to match these two semantic vectors. So that's the idea. Uh, by now, I hope you, well, got this main idea that you can represent documents and queries in two different ways as uh, distributions and then match them using kubak Weidler or divergence or QLM. Or you can represent them as vectors and match them with cosine similarities. And there are many different approaches to both. You can use just language models and, or even uh, semantic topic models for the first. You can use uh, vector space model TFIDFs or LSI for the second. And we will discuss also neural approaches, which are also based on vectors.